said, this is the greatest Bible study I've ever conducted. He says, he opened Jesus. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. You see, the church, the Bible of the early church was the Septuagint. It was the Old Testament, the Greek Old Testament. And Jesus began to open their minds concerning that. And as we read, we see that he opened their minds concerning two things. Look at verse 46. He told them, this is what is written, that Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. Ah. I don't know if you're like me, but sometimes I, I think, you know, if I could just go back in time and just relive some of these events and, and be an eyewitness to that. You ever think like that? Yeah. This, if, if I could do that, this would be one of those events. Now, I don't think any of us were actually there when this took place. Bob, you weren't there, were you? No, no. Okay. I just wanted to, just wanted to confirm that. Yeah. None of us were there, but you know, this is the beautiful thing about Scripture. We weren't there, but there's a witness to those Scriptures that Jesus opened their minds to. And as we begin to read through the pages of Acts, we can begin to see those Old Testament texts that he opened their minds to. I want you to think about this. This is the first part. It says he opened their minds concerning that the Christ must suffer. He will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. What Old Testament passage speaks about the death of Jesus and his resurrection? What was one of those Old Testament passages that he opened their minds to? As we read through the pages of Acts, we begin to get a hint of that. Do you remember in Acts 8, the story of Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch? Do you remember that story? Where, where the Spirit directs Philip to go to this chariot. I've often wondered how that went. He said, stay close to that chariot. And there, the Philip begins to respond. Do you remember the scripture that the Ethiopian eunuch is reading? You know, it's, it's quite a story. Because this Ethiopian eunuch, he had gone to Jerusalem. He wanted... To, um, he wanted to know God. He wanted to worship God. But as a eunuch, he would not have been able to have entered into the temple. And so he's coming back home. Must have been discouraged. Couldn't understand the text. And he's reading. He reads out loud. And he reads from Isaiah chapter 53. Those 12 verses in Isaiah chapter 53 are the, the best summary of the gospel that we have. How Jesus, verses 1 through 3, how he was despised and rejected how he bore our sins, how he died for us, and how he was vindicated. One of the texts that Jesus opened their minds to, I have no doubt, was Isaiah chapter 53. And it speaks of his death and his resurrection. But that's not where Jesus stops. The Bible study continues. Notice this in verse 47. This is what he says. And repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. This is a theme that runs throughout the book of Acts as well. You are witnesses of these things. I'm going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you've been clothed with power from on high. And here again, we have the promise of Pentecostal power. We have the promise of baptism in the Holy Spirit. Repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. I want you to think about this. It's a little harder. What Old Testament passages did Jesus open their minds to that speak of the mission of the church? That repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached to all nations. What Old Testament passages does he open their minds to here? Well, again, as we read those pages of Acts, we begin to get glimpses of at least what some of those texts were. And when we come to Acts 1.8, we get an insight into one of those texts. Remember Acts 1.8? I've quoted it several times. You shall receive power. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Now think about that phrase, to the ends of the earth. That phrase is repeated.
repeated in Isaiah chapter 49, 6. Isaiah chapter 49, 6 is quoted by Paul in, in the sermon in Acts uh, 30, chapter 13. This, too, was one of those passages that Jesus opened their minds to. This was a church, this was a sermon that the early church understood well. Let me read Isaiah 49, 6. Think of this. The Lord is speaking and he says, It is too small a thing for you to be my servants to restore the tribes of Jacob. That's too small. It's too small a thing for you to be my servant to restore the tribes of Jacob and bring back those of Israel I have kept. I will also make you a light for the Gentiles that you may bring my salvation to the ends of the earth. And he echoes this text. He says, in other words, the disciples are saying, Jesus, when are you going to restore, when are you going to restore Israel? When are you going to restore the kingdom to Israel? And Jesus says, don't worry about that. I'm doing that. You're a part of that. My plan will be fulfilled. But he says, my plans for you are larger than you can imagine. They're greater than, than you can understand. My plan for you is not simply about Israel. I will make you a light to the nations so that you may bring my salvation to the kings of the earth. Again, this roots uh, our understanding of the Pentecostal gift and power from on high. It, it, it roots our understanding in this missiological sending. Luke 10, in the sending of the 70, tells us that each one of us, each one of us have been called to represent Jesus. And that as the Spirit comes, the 12, the 70, all of God's people, all of God's people, that wish of Moses echoes in our ears and we see that that is fulfilled at Pentecost. And as we look at this passages that Jesus opened up to them, and as we look at how he unfolds God's plan, we see again, it centers our attention on this, that Pentecost is that moment of empowering where he sends us out to be his witnesses. This is a Pentecostal reading. It tells us that as we read the book of Acts, that Acts intended it to serve as a model for our lives. He wrote the book of Acts to guide us in the mission that he has called each one of us to fulfill. You are a fulfillment of Moses' wish. I wish that all of the Lord's people would be promised. You are a fulfillment of that wish as, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, you bear witness for Jesus. Amen. Can we pray together? Lord, I thank you for the fact that you delight to use us and call us. Lord, we just rejoice in your goodness to us. That you long to use us. That you have called us to represent you. And Lord, I pray, I pray that you would birth in our hearts a hunger. Lord, may we, Lord, may we be like those disciples, those early disciples at Pentecost. Lord, who, who are open, seeking, praying, asking that you use us. Lord, we pray that you would, we pray that, I, 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 I pray for Southeastern University this group of students gathered here this evening. Lord, we pray that the Pentecostal revival would flow from this university. Lord, just as back in 1901, in a little Bible school in Topeka, Kansas, that you began to pour out your spirit on those. Lord, the cry of our heart is, let it happen here. Lord, let it happen here. Let it radiate from here as well. Lord, may we be consumed with that, with that sense of, that, with that desire, with that sense of expectation that you will use us. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. We're ready for some Q and A. Any questions that you have, observations that uh, you want to make, you can. There are mics here. And we can find you elsewhere too. So uh, if you have any questions that you would like to address,
address to Dr. Menzies? Anyone? <laughs> <laughs>